Infants cry. It's how they communicate. While crying is perfectly natural and normal, it can cause stress and frustration for both new and experienced parents and caregivers alike. This video will help you better understand why infants cry and prepare you with expert tips and strategies to help soothe your baby and keep you calm and cool when stress heats up. Why do babies cry? Babies cry because that's what they do, right? That's their way of communicating with us. Um, that's how they tell us their needs. And usually as a parent, you learn those different cries and what they mean. Is that a hungry cry? Is that a wet cry? Is that a tired cry? So that's their way of communicating with us. There were plenty of situations where no matter what we did, he was not happy and um, crying and um, just had to had to grit through it. When he, he wouldn't calm down, we'd start kind of singing to him. And I think the singing was more so for us to kind of like help us, you know, stay calm uh, with him in the moment than it was for him. He's trying to tell us something and thinking about the fact that, you know, if, if I had an ache or a pain and I couldn't verbally tell someone about it, uh, I'd probably be screaming my head off too. What are parents dealing with? There's a lot of different things that new parents can go through that can um, make it even more difficult when they hear their babies crying. New parents are obviously sleep deprived. Um, babies generally only sleep for about two or three hours at a time when they first come home from the hospital. So parents are only getting two or three hours of sleep as well. And if they're breastfeeding, they may have that period where they're feeding the baby and then getting the baby back to sleep. So it's an even shorter period of time that the parents even get to sleep. A lot of moms suffer from postpartum depression, probably more than we realize because we know it's an underdiagnosed condition. So that can make moms feel more stressed out as well. If there's older kids at home, that can add some extra stress as well because you're dealing with them plus the new baby. So there's many, many reasons why new parents are stressed out. How long is normal for baby to cry? Typically, again, from I would say infancy to two to three months of age, they can cry for up to eight hours a day and that could still be considered within the, the normal period of, or normal part of development. Well, a caregiver should become concerned if they've fed the infant, they've checked the infant's diaper, they've attempted to soothe the infant, and the infant is still crying. Um, if they notice that something else is wrong with the infant, for example, they're having nasal congestion, they have a rash, they have a fever, then that should alarm them that something else is going on and that they may need to seek medical care. Because she was crying so much, I didn't know what to do at all. Um, but I would really advise, like what helped me to get past that was having people by your side that you can really count on. Having, system. Yeah, having a support system. Even if it's just, it doesn't have to be a whole group of people to be a support system. It can just be one or two people. If you can have somebody to, to talk to you, you know, or to just even just sit and, and be around you for just for an hour or two, it would really help. What is abusive head trauma? We use the overall term abusive head trauma to signify that there's many different things that can happen to the head to cause trauma. It's not just shaking, it's not just an impact. It can be something like an impact to the skull, such as something striking the skull or the skull being struck against something. It can be something like a shaking, very violent, repetitive, back and forth shaking, where unfortunately the neck is weak and doesn't support the head going back and forth like it might in an adult. Or it can be a combination where the head is shaken and then struck against something. And it's that quick acceleration, deceleration motion, and then the sudden stop that causes all of the damage in the brain. As you can imagine, when babies are crying and you have all these other stressors going on, it's very easy for parents to get overwhelmed and even lose control. The most common reason why infants are injured is due to persistent crying and parent frustration with this crying. So if you can imagine this outside stress, sleep deprivation, having an infant who you can't get to stop crying can sometimes lead some caregivers or parents to hurt their child. 
So babies are actually not as fragile as you would think. You can play with a baby and do normal baby things and not worry about causing abusive head trauma. You can bounce your baby up and down like this. You can swing your baby, you know, you can go wee up with your baby. You can swing them from side to side. You can put them in a baby swing. Uh, you can push them in the park. All of those things are not going to cause head trauma. When we see children with abusive head trauma, we are talking about a violent shaking, a shaking where if somebody walked into the room and saw it, they would instantly know that excessive shaking was occurring. And that's what we see sometimes when, when these things are witnessed. We're talking about their head flopping back and forth and not being supported by their neck. We're not talking about normal baby activities or normal baby play. So most parents don't need to worry that they're ever going to injure their babies. How are babies' brains different from adult brains? When you think about babies and toddlers, they have these really big heads on these kind of little skinny weak necks going on. So what happens is when babies fall, as they start getting more mobile and walking, they have this big head supported by kind of this thinner structure. So when they fall, their neck can't support their head, so it creates more of like a whiplash type effect. And when you think about babies' brains, it's really soft, kind of like unset gelatin. So if you think about the jello mold that grandma would make, it has that consistency. So if you think about that jello on a plate and you shake it, it just kind of moves. So that's kind of what babies' brains like. So you got this big head, a weak neck, and this really soft brain inside their head. Abuse of head trauma tends to have a range. Some infants will have bleeding around their brain. Some of them will actually have brain damage and some of that brain damage can be long-term and may not emerge until school age. So for some infants, they may have what we consider um, no damage that's seen when they're evaluated, and it may be not until school age when they're found to have learning disabilities or um, erratic behaviors that are concerning to parent or caregiver, and that could be due to the abuse of head trauma that they experienced in infancy. Along that same spectrum, along the more severe line of abuse of head trauma, infants can sometimes have immediate damage that can lead to seizures for the rest of their lives, seizures that are uncontrolled even with medications, some can have cerebral palsy, some may be unable to walk, and at the ultimate end of abuse of head trauma, it can lead to death if the injuries are severe enough. How to prevent abusive head trauma? I would say for anybody in that instance, when you have that moment where the child is crying a little too much for you or you feel like you're overwhelmed, it's okay to put the child down and step away and collect yourself. Because if we don't, you know, within that instant, you can you can make a mistake, you know what I'm saying? Or you do something that you can regret for the rest of your life, you know? One of the things that I recommend for all my families and all my parents of infants is when baby's crying to try the four S's. So the first S stands for suck. So offer the baby a pacifier. That can be very soothing. Swaddle the baby. Make sure you're not swaddling baby's head in, but make sure you just do a nice tighter swaddle over their arms and you can leave their little legs free if they like to kick. So you offer them a pacifier for suck, you swaddle, and then you sway, the third S. So you can gently rock the baby in a rocking chair, or you could just sway baby in your arms. And then the fourth S is a soothing sound. Most parents prefer to just say, shh. So that's the four S's. How to prepare a caregiver or family member. One of the things I think we don't talk about much is when someone else is gonna come care for your baby, having a discussion to them about what to do if they're stressed because your baby's um, been crying a lot or may have trouble settling down or may just be screaming out of control because, because, right? There isn't really a reason. So I think it's hard sometimes to say to someone, um, let's talk about this. Uh, but it's important, right? Your baby is very important and you need to make sure that someone isn't going to get so stressed out that they wanna hit or hurt um, or shake your baby because those things are very dangerous. So how do you have those conversations? Um, I think it's important to be open and honest and saying, you know, I was taught this, um, I learned this, uh, and it's important for me to share with you. So here are some techniques that you might do if my baby starts crying out of control. You can always call me. I'll be, I'm willing to come home, take five minutes, walk away, put my baby in the bassinet, put my baby in the playpen, put my baby somewhere safe where they're not gonna get hurt. Show them the numbers on your refrigerator. Show them that it's normal to use them because you have them up there for yourself. Uh, and make sure that they understand that, you know, no matter what, um, it's okay for a baby to cry. You don't have to make them stop. 
It'd be nice if they stopped crying if they were comforted, but you don't have to make them stop crying. So one of the most important things you're gonna do, not only as a parent, but in your whole parenting journey is selecting caregivers to care not only for your infant, but your child as they grow older. You never want to allow somebody who angers easily, loses their temper, is under the influence of drug or alcohol to care for your child. That's not a safe caregiver and won't create a safe environment for your child to be cared in. It's always a little stressful when you, uh, you, know, you, you know he's been fed, you know you've changed his diaper and he's still crying and it's like you want to, you want to fix it but you don't know how to fix it. Um, and just, you know, taking deep breaths and, and being patient with him and just snuggling on him until, uh, until he would you know, calm down. So remember, for a baby, crying is perfectly normal. When stress heats up, keep your cool. Remember the four S's. Suck, swaddle, swaddle sway, and shh. Babies cry. Have a plan. Countdown to calm.